We've exploded wheels on this channel before. I think we broke it. This is almost as good as six. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a while. So we thought we'd explode some more. Hookless wheels are back in the news. What is hookless? Well, historically, bicycle wheels have been manufactured with a small hook shape inside the rim, here. This interlocks with the bead of a tire and keeps the tire on securely. In the last few years, wheels without hooks have started to appear for sale. Two huge wheel manufacturers, both Zip and Envy, their full road offering is now hookless. Because of the design, you need to run lower pressures so your tires don't explode off the rim. Almost all manufacturers that sell hookless state that you shouldn't inflate your tires to more than 72 and a half PSI. But are they doing enough to let consumers know this? Hookless does have its benefits. The shape is more impact resistant, so brilliant for gravel and mountain bike where you might be getting hard impacts on the ground and you're running lower pressures anyway. But the benefits for road are less clear. I went over to see Dov from Parkour to do some science. So we've got our old model of Alta gravel wheel, which did used to have a hooked rim. And we've got our new model of Alta gravel wheel, which has a hookless rim. We are going to fit a tire to them and see at what point there is an issue in terms of pressure. What that issue may be, we don't know. Last time around, it was the bead of the tire that actually failed. Um, but we want to have a look and see effectively is hookless safe for use on the road. So full disclaimer, we are using a road tire here. Yes, it is a gravel wheel. However, effectively the rim is to all intents and purposes the same. Last time around, we were criticized for lack of safety precautions. So we've thought about that already. So let's go get kitted up. So I've got you your safety glasses, a lab coat because we're scientific. And I did think that we needed some form of safety screen. Um, the only issue being that I completely miscalculated the size of it. So Amazon delivered this. The tire we're using for this test is a Continental GP5000 TR, the tubeless ready version, which is compatible with hookless wheels. We're gonna seat the tires first with a normal pump, and then we're gonna take them outside and um, start the first test. First up is the hookless option. This has a maximum pressure limit of 72 and a half PSI, which is five bar. People are at risk of riding these kind of pressures if they haven't read the instruction manuals of their hookless wheels, which is why there may have been problems in the past. We're gonna start pumping it and see how high we can go. Fifty PSI. I'm already getting nervous. I'm behind the screen. Right, we are officially 72 and a half. Well, close. Danger zone. Probably 73. We are now in the danger zone. <laughs> I'm literally back and down to get safer. 85. 90. I've literally got sealant dripping in my hair. <laughs> Nothing prepares you for it. 110 PSI. 210 heart rate. I've definitely ridden tires at 110 PSI before. My heart rate's honestly gone nuts. <laughs> that was, oh Oops. Jesus. <laughs> if it wasn't broken now it is. Okay, so that's just an explosive force. So genuinely, there's no break in the tire bead. So what's happened there is in order to make the tire slightly easier to fit, the bead is a little bit more elastic. So the overpressure that we put in there has probably stretched the bead to the point where it just popped off the tire. So I reckon if I pop this tire back on, we'll be able to reinflate it. What pressure was that? 110 PSI. 110? 110. It's not that high, is it? I mean, that's just over a 50% safety margin, which, well, isn't ideal. The thing that gets me with this and the, the problem I see is that historically, cyclists put 100 PSI in a wheel. Lots of people do. Yeah. You know, they go, oh, 100 PSI. Yeah. And if someone gets a wheel like that, they buy it secondhand or they buy it new and they, they're not told by the bike shop or they don't read the instructions, you could easily put 110 PSI in a wheel. What if you put 100 in and you went riding and it was okay 
and then you went at altitude. If you're out riding, you get a flat, you stick a gas canister in it, you've got no idea of what pressure's going in there. And bearing in mind, this is a hookless rim that is manufactured to within ETRTO tolerances. This is a hookless compatible tire that is manufactured to within ETRTO tolerances. By all estimations, they should work safely together. And to be fair, they did up to the 72 and a half PSI limit. The question is, is there enough of a safety margin between the 110 that it blew off at and the 72 and a half? I'm still scared of it, even though it's already exploded. So that's 72 and a half PSI, which is the limit for a hookless rim. Obviously this one's hooked so we can go past it safely. One fifty. Oh, I'm scared. I'm not wearing my safety goggles. Wait. It's 160 PSI. I'm standing well back. We have created a bomb. At least it's not in your garden, it's just in your office, yeah. I'm gonna be so strong. Do it. Don't touch it. It's fine. It's safe. Your hand is shaking. <laughs> That's all of my body weight, and I literally can't go anymore with this hand pump. So I think we're at the max. I'm still scared. I think it's safe to say if you have non-hookless wheels, don't worry about pumping your tires up too high. But do always follow the instructions. I think just based on the noises, air manages to escape through very tiny gaps in the tubeless tape. So getting it high enough and then sustaining that pressure really, really hard and you just can't pump anymore. So, well, don't pump your tires up this hard, but also very confidence inspiring that we can um, go that high without it exploding. The big problem that I have with this situation is that a lot of customers may not know that they have hookless wheels. And if they don't, they might inflate them too much and have an accident in the house or even out on the road, worst case. The other issue is, most road tires will have printed on a minimum and maximum pressure or a recommended range on the side. These tires are being supplied in bike shops, because I had one in my hands the other day, on hookless wheels, which can be really misleading for someone buying it. This is a giant hookless wheel with a giant tire fitted to it, and the tire clearly states 85 to 120 PSI. And as we know, most manufacturers only recommend around 72 and a half PSI. This is a total minefield, and I'm sure you'll agree in the comments, something needs to be done. Hopefully this video goes a little bit of the way in educating people. If you have wheels at home and you bought them in the last few years, do double check them. Let us know in the comment section if any of you have been caught out, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.